Good evening, everyone. This is Cruz de la Cruz along with Stephen Fines for another exciting edition of ESW Rise. We have quite a night for them, don't we, Stephen? Oh, I'm so excited to get tonight started, Cruz. We are well on the road to Wrestle Empire. We just came off a tremendous show at ESW Triumphant, available on our YouTube channel right now. But as of Triumphant, we do have two matches confirmed for ESW Wrestle Empire with involving these three ladies here, the Luna Chicks. As we saw a Triumphant, we saw the Luna Chicks, Holly Gates and Missy Murder become the number one contenders to the ESW Diamonds Tag Championships and they will face the champions Hollywood at Wrestle Empire but not only that Ricky Riot was able to defeat two-on-one Hollywood and earn a right to face the ESW Diamonds champion Chanel Carter at Wrestle Empire that should be quite an evening for these ladies and you know it's been a long road for them and you know for Ricky and both the Luna Chicks and we'll see if the road that leads them to Wrestle Empire will benefit in the end but out next the ladies they will be facing at Wrestle Empire, uh, Hollywood here, and Holly Gates and BYT here in one-on-one -on -one action here tonight. And I know for a fact that Hollywood are not in the best of moods here tonight. Oh, they can't be in a, in a great mood at all, please. I mean, like, like I was saying, you know, the Luna Chicks have earned their right to punch their ticket to Wrestle Empire to face these three women, Hollywood, and I know for a fact Chanel Carter is not happy one bit. Oh, absolutely, Stephen. I'm sure that uh, Chanel Carter is, you know, just livid about having to face Ricky Riot once again. I mean, Ricky came ridiculously close to dethroning Chanel uh, back in Up All Night. Oh, absolutely. She was she was mere centimeters away from becoming ESW Diamonds champion. You know, but of course, Chanel Carter just pulled it out at the last second. And, you know, she got lucky on at Up All Night. You know, it was a ladder match, so, you know, it was the first person to grab the championship. But at Wrestle Empire, you know, who knows what the stipulation is going to be because that's, that's Ricky's choice. Right, you are. And uh, this should be quite a telling match. See which side of these uh, factions can gain the upper hand. And here we go, one-on-one. -on -one. BYT and Holly Gates and Holly coming out strong with the right hand here. Yeah, the two powerhouses of each team's Holly Gates and BYT duking it out here. And Holly Gates with the upper hand in the in the early going here. Nope, has her up. Big spin out suplex there. Holly Gates talking smack here. And there is definitely no love loss between these two teams. Oh, absolutely not. It seems like, you know, these two teams have been at each other's throats the entire season, Cruz. Oh, for sure, Steven. And, and for it all to culminate at Wrestle Empire, I mean, I would say, you know, that is, you know, you know, that's rather fitting. Oh, it's very apropos that it's that's oh. ending. Oh, wait a second. Monica up on the apron here. Causing the distraction. Holly needs to keep focus here. Serving her purpose very well. And now BYT back into the match. Oh, vicious kicks by the insurance policy, BYT. And uh, BYT coming in strong again after that distraction. Oh, big back suplex. Man, just planning her under the mat. BYT. Oh, big knees. That, that just, efficient striking oh. ability of BYT. Those knees just devastating to the dome. Oh, again. A basement drop kick. And that distraction from Monica Hampton paying dividends oh. right now. And the big spine buster by BYT into the cover. Oh, a kick out. Way too early for that. Big uppercut from from Holly. Oh, BYT I've brings her up. Seen this before. Oh! that side suplex into a cover and she got her that is all she wrote your winner the insurance policy BYT and let's take another look here oh there it is that big side suplex and Chanel Carter definitely has to be happy with this her team gaining some momentum leading into Wrestle Empire 
100% bruised. There she is. The, the champions of the Diamonds Division. Running the whole division. All right, up next we have a one-on-one -on -one contest coming out first. Big Terry Mack. Haven't seen him for, for quite some time, but you know he's come making his way out here on Rise with his best friend Serenity. And uh, I I do know that his opponent also hasn't been seen in quite some time. I'm talking about the executive, the professional, Philip Price. From what I hear, uh, Stephen, Philip Price has been a uh, it isn't that he hasn't been active with ESW. From what I hear, through the grapevine, is that he's actually been talking to the to the board of directors a lot lately. I don't know what's up with that. That's exactly what I've heard, Cruz. I've heard there's some big business going on behind the scenes involving Philip Price and ESW. What that is, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't got the scoop yet. Um, but you know, as an investigative journalist, I will get to the bottom of it, Cruz. You always do, Steven. And here we see the professional, the executive, Philip Price, as always, uh, being accompanied to the ring by his, uh, personal guess, assistant. Yeah, his personal assistant, I guess you'd say, Liam David. His secretary. His, his professional brown noser, Cruz. <laughs> let's, be, let's call a spade a spade. But yeah, it's Philip, uh, Philip Price out here for some one-on-one -on -one action and... Uh, you know, we haven't seen a lot of Philip Price, but like I said, he's been uh, kind of working his way in, into the, the the underbelly of ESW for whatever reason. And I'm sure we'll find out in the weeks to come. But this should be quite an exceptional contest. Two big guys, you know, just you know, ready to go at it. Both of them, you know, I'm sure they're trying to gain some traction to see where they fit into Wrestle Empire. Oh, absolutely! This is going to be a big hoss battle. These two big men. You know, it's it's like they say, big meaty men slapping meat, and that's exactly what this match is going to be. You know, and like you said, we haven't seen that much of Philip Price in the ring, but what we have seen is very impressive, and we also know what Big Mac is capable of doing. So this is going to be a great contest for you. Oh, for sure. Uh, big Terry Mac, he's always been a favorite here in ESW with the fans. You know, he just gets everyone pumped. He gets everyone excited. I can't say the same for Philip Price, but uh, this should be, like I said, a very competitive contest. I'm, I'm excited to see who comes out on top. A clashing of styles for sure. Now, here we go, guys. Big Terry Mack and the professional Philip Price, one on one. Oh. Both men throwing potatoes right out the gate. And Terry Mack has the height advantage here. I don't know about the power advantage, but. He does have the height advantage. Oh, big Terry Mack. A combination of strikes and kicks early on. Oh, big knee strike in, in the corner there. Now Big Mac talking some trash. Throwing some more kicks and strikes. See, that's the thing about Big Mac. Once he gets his hands on you. Oh, his reach is unreal. Man, big boot to the dome. Oh, big splash by Big Mac. Hmm. Laying it in there. And, it's, and yeah, it is interesting, like you alluded, that both of these men don't have obvious paths to Wrestle Empire as of yet. As of yet, Steven. I'm sure both of them are just dying to get on the card because it's going to be the biggest show of the season. Oh, absolutely, Cruz. It's, it's the, yeah, it's the biggest show of the season. It's the culmination of season one. And here we go, Big Mac just laying it to Philip Price here. Oh, Philip had enough of it, threw a big knee at him. It took him down to the mat, and now he's doing it again. Man, big face slam. Now Philip Price wrenching on the arm. I don't think he's going to get Big Mac to tap here. I think it's more about just wearing the big man down. Man, look at that. Oh, Philip, I mean, Liam David trying to throw a chair in the ring. He might have did more harm than good there, distracting the referee. 
That's the thing about Liam David. He's not the brightest. <laughs> he he works cheap, from what <laughs> I hear. So that's why Philip keeps him around. Nope. Oh man, big double axe handle with the well, assist from uh, uh, Liam David. You know, sometimes he pays off. Oh, Big Mac said, "Not not today." Big Mac firing back, snapmare. Oh, big big punch to the neck. Big Mac getting him back in the ring here. Big Mac does not want to count out here. Oh, wait a minute. We're going to see Return of the Mac. And that could be it. Oh, Big Mac. Big acknowledging Mac, the fans. He's feeling it, Cruz. Could we see it? Looks like he's going for it. The Mac Knife Powerbomb. And, oh, he's and dropped he, him. He connects. Oh, and Philip Price kicks out. Philip Price just kicked out of the Mac Knife Power Bomb. Oh, again with that running knee. Not many have kicked out of the Mac Knife Power Bomb. No, the elevation alone will you know knock you out. Oh, Big Mac coming back. Oh, sizing him up again. He could be going for it again. Another Mac Knife Power Bomb. Oh wait. Reversal. Back body drop by Philip Price. I don't know how wise this is on Price to be taunting right now. Oh! The price drop! The price drop! Into the cover. Big Mac kicks out there. Price thought he had it, but now, now he's sizing him up. Can we see it? The price check! Oh, man. Price check! Into the cover. Oh, and Big Mac kicks out Big the very Mac, last second. Big Mac just kicked out of the price check. Philip Price cannot be happy. Oh, you can tell the frustration is setting in. Oh, Big Mac. Big shoulder block. And Big Mac going up top. Oh, oh, man. Leg drop. Huge leg drop. And now, oh, Liam David. I, I think Liam David needs to watch who he's talking to. Big Mac would, would annihilate him. Oh, absolutely. Could we be seeing it again? The Mac Knife Powerbomb. Oh, man. And that, 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 that should be it. And three. Big Terry Mac. Big victory here tonight on Rise. Huge victory. And let's take another look here. And that price drop and the price check just could not keep Big Mac down. But the Mac Knife Powerbomb kept Philip Price down from a 1 2 3. Your winner, Big Terry Mac. Big victory. Let's see where this leads to Terry Mac. See if it leads him to Wrestle Empire. Out next is the Outcast, Bree George, in one on one action. Here we go, and she's coming off a big victory at ESW Triumphant. Yeah, she got a big victory in her home country at Triumphant in that street fight against the Black Mamba, Madison Shaw, that the, the entire world is still talking about. And, and Wait a what? minute. It's the Black Mamba, Madison Shaw. What is she doing? Oh, oh my God. I, get, I guess she's not done with Bree George. She's assaulting Bree George. We thought it was all over. After triumphant that street fight, but apparently it's not. Oh my goodness! Oh, Madison is just assaulting the outcast. Oh, Bree trying to fight back here. She's lifting Madison back up with some combination of strikes. Madison dodged. Madison just took her off her. Oh, oh man! Spear took her out of her element here. Speared the outcast in half. Oh, just laying it to her here. This cannot, this cannot go well for Bree George. Madison Shaw just will not accept defeat at the hands of Bree George. And Bree trying to fight back here. Oh, block! Oh man, Madison, big clothesline. Just lays her out. Oh, Bree trying to fight back. 
You know, she was caught off guard here. She was expecting, you know, have a match with Tokyo Rose. Oh, another spear. Jesus. I don't even know if Brie can continue for the match here. Oh, the snake bite. Oh, Madison needs to get out of here. We have a match. Madison Shaw has done enough. Brie's Bree made it to the ring. It looks like she's going to go on and compete here. I mean, yeah. you got to hand it to Brie for, you know. That's the kind of competitor the outcast is. Here we see her opponent coming down to the ring, Tokyo Rose. And Tokyo Rose definitely looking for a, a big win here. Both these ladies, like like everyone else here on the roster, trying to find their way to Wrestle Empire. A few, a few members of the roster know their path. Most of them don't. And Tokyo Rose, a big fan favorite here, and so is Bree George. So uh, I see the crowd being split 50-50 for sure. Oh, absolutely. You, you do have to feel for Bree George a, a bit, you know, after that assault by the Black Mamba, Madison Shaw. I mean, it's pretty obvious that Madison Shaw just, she cannot accept defeat. She never has. She hasn't accepted defeat all season. She, she won't let it go. And, and, you know, and now she might, you know, cost Bree George, you know, a chance at Wrestle Empire. You know, we'll, we'll just have to see, but let's get on with this match. We'll see if Bree can come back after that vicious assault. Oh, and Rose taking it right to her. Yeah, Rose with a definite advantage going into this match for sure. You know, and like you say, that just shows the kind of competitor Bree George is. And she wasn't gonna, you know, she wasn't gonna say she couldn't compete. You know, I think you'd have to wheel her out of here not to, for her not to compete. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. Rose staying on her. I mean, when, oh. when you're facing someone like the Outcast, Bree George, that's exactly, you know, regardless of what happened, that's that's the strategy you have to employ. Oh, is for staying sure. on them. Oh man, I even let her get in the ring. And this is this is exactly what Tokyo Rose needs to do. She's staying on top of her here. She's really laying it into the outcast Bree George. Yeah, I mean the the heart and determination from Bree, Bree George is is outstanding to say the least. But, oh, absolutely. But. You know, it might not have been the the wisest you know strategy, the wisest move to make, because because Tokyo Rose is just really laying it in the Bree George oh, at the moment. Oh, for sure. It looks like Tokyo Rose looks like she'll take a count out victory here. Hey, a, a, a win's a win, up to a count of seven. Oh wait a minute. Oh man. Drop kicks are off the apron. We're at a nine count. Can she beat the referee's count? Oh, barely. Just barely gets back into the ring. Oh. And an edge matic by Tokyo Rose. Oh, Brie kicks out. Seeing more of a, of a vicious streak from Tokyo Rose here tonight. Oh, for sure, Steven. And, and, you know, and I think that's what she needs. She's been missing that bit of an edge. Oh, Brie. Oh, reverse, reverse her into that power slam. And now just stomping away at her. Maybe that's the opening Bree needed here. Oh, big spinning neck breaker by Bree George. Into a cover. Got a two count. Oh, man. Tokyo Rose just getting the shoulder up. You know, and that just shows how, you know, how impactful Bree George's uh, offense is here. You know, she already got a two count on Tokyo Rose. Oh, Bree just not letting up here. Tokyo, Tokyo Rose trying to fight back here. Another edge o -matic. Into another cover. Another kick out. Bree George just will not stay down. She, she just can't let herself be defeated no matter what happened before the match. Oh, for sure. And, and Bree George is a different type of competitor. You know. World travel. Oh, the plur choke. Will, she, she has Bree George trapped in the blur choke. Will Bree tap? And she has it right in the middle of the ring. And Bree, oh, rolling out of it. Able to use her momentum to escape. 
Oh, that big backhand by Bree George. And now things could be turning around for the outcast. Big knee into a bulldog. And some more vicious stomps. What's Bree have in mind here? Looks like she's sizing her up. Would she be going for it? The Sidewinder pile driver. Oh, man. Into the cover. Oh. And Tokyo Rose just kicked out. And I don't think Bree was able to put all of it into it, you know, after that beating she took. Oh, I think you're right, Cruz. She wasn't able to put everything into it as she normally does. But you got to hand it to to Rose here. She's the second person ever to kick out of that. Oh, Tokyo Rose is as tough as they come. You know, Tokyo Rose and Tokyo Thunder both trained in Japan, and you know how tough that is. Oh, very well versed in strong style. Bree waiting for Rose to get back in the ring here. Looks like Rose is just trying to get her wits about her. Oh, kick. She have in mind here. We've seen this before. Oh, man. It's dropped on her head. And that did it for her right there. Bree, Bree George showing a new, a new side of offense here to put opponents away. Coming back from within from that vicious assault before the match by Madison Shaw, but still coming out the victor. The outcast Bree George with a huge victory here on Ryan. And you know she's going to have something to say about Madison Shaw going forward. All right, all right, Stephen. We have more action here tonight. We have Renegade Ross Snodgrass going going in one on one action against Father Peter of the Cooks. This is a rematch from a few episodes of Rise ago, and we did see a triumphant Renegade Ross Snodgrass and the Phantom Michael Temple were victorious in that tag match against Brother Levi and Brother Isaiah of the Chosen. Oh, for sure, and you, you know Snodgrass wants to be done with the Chosen. You know, honestly, you know, I think Snodgrass wants to get back on that ESW YouTube title hunt. I believe you're right, Cruz, but, you know, he has one more demon to exercise, and that's the Father Peter himself, because Father Peter does have a victory over the Renegade, and you know Ross Snodgrass wants to avenge that loss. Oh, absolutely. You know, and that's just the kind of comparator Snodgrass is, you know. You know, he's always here to prove himself that he, you know, he, he got into ESW by winning the claim to fame battle royal, and, you know, and he demands respect. And out next, the leader of the chosen, Father Peter. Speaking of someone else who commands respect, that's Father Peter. And he's coming out here with Sister Miriam, which it seems like Sister Miriam has caught the eye of the Phantom. It, it seems that way, and, you know, I'm sure Father Peter is not very happy about that either. You know, one of his quote-unquote children, you know, catching, catching the eye of his, you know, sworn enemy. You just tell that Sister Miriam, there's just something off with her whole her whole demeanor. You no, know, as of late, she has not she has not been acting like you know her brothers by any stretch of the imagination. Not at all. All right, guys, one on one action: the Renegade versus Father Peter. Can Ross Snodgrass get that win back here tonight? He comes out of the gate with a right hand. Oh, taking Father Peter down. And Renegade Ross Snodgrass is not playing around here tonight. Big uppercut. Father Peter doesn't even know what hit him. Double underhook. Suplex into a bridge pin. Two count already. I think Father Peter's just, uh, you know, taken off guard with the offense. So I, 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 I stand corrected. Oh, man. Springboard drop kick. Tremendous offense by Father Peter. 
at least we forget he's the one who taught all of his children everything they know. Oh, big DDT by Peter, man. Just wearing, it, wearing down that arm of renegade Ross Snodgrass. Oh, wrenching on his face here. Snodgrass fighting out. Oh, but Peter right back with that big right hand. Oh. Could we be seeing the crown of thorns? This is what put Snodgrass away before. Oh, he slips out. Oh, man, big boot. The renegade had it scouted. Oh. Father Peter again with a springboard. Oh. Springboard drop kick taking Renegade Ross back down to the mat into the cover. Snodgrass kicking out here. Big punch. Another punch. Oh, man. Big uppercut. Snodgrass getting fired up along with the crowd here. He's really feeling it right now, Cruz. Oh, big stomps to the chest. It's vicious. Just wearing Father Peter down. And this is what happens when you get on Renegade Ross Snodgrass's bad side. Big elbow drop. Driving the elbow into the heart of Father Peter. And that, we'll see if that's enough. One count. Jeez. You know, Father Peter, you know, we talk about the Phantom's powers, but Father Peter, he has powers of his own that we can't explain. It seems that way. Oh, it's not aggressive. Trying to fire back here. Stay on him. That uppercut. Oh, Miriam distracting Snodgrass here. It seems like reluctantly. Gave Father Peter the opening. Oh, wait a minute. You see in the crown of thorns. And he has him up. The crown of the. Oh, wait. What is this, Stephen? What's going on? What? 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 Lights back on. Snodgrass has him. What? What just happened? He's got him up for the jackhammer. Oh! He, he just hit jackhammer on Father Peter. In three, Snodgrass has picked up the victory. What, what did we just see, Cruz? Was that was that a message from the Phantom? It has to be. It looks like the Phantom has just called Peter out for Wrestle Empire. I believe you're right. Will Father Peter accept the challenge? Here we see Renegade Ross Snodgrass picking up the huge victory with the jackhammer, avenging his loss to Father Peter. And I, I, the, the entire arena and, and myself, we're, we're still in shock. That, that's the Phantom for you, Steven. That's the Phantom. Big, big congrats to Renegade Ross Snodgrass. Big victory. And like, and like we've been saying all night, we'll see if this leads him back to the ESW YouTube title picture at Wrestle Empire. We have more one-on-one -on -one action coming up here tonight. We have Romy Sakamoto competing in one-on-one -on -one action here. And I am very excited to see Romy. She, it's been a little while since she's been here in ESW. I would love to see the Japanese firecracker come out to the ring here on Rise. And yeah, it's been a little minute since we've seen Romy Sakamoto. And it's going to be interesting how she kind of carves a path to, uh, to Wrestle Empire. Um, but... You know, her opponent is also looking to do the exact same thing, and she's facing the the beautiful and powerful Poderosa. And Poderosa's been on quite a streak here when, when, when she's been competitive here in ESW, picking some big wins. Will, that, will another big victory happen at the expense of Romy Sakamoto? Well, let's just see here tonight, and out next, Poderosa. 
the beautiful and powerful Podorosa. And like, like you said, Kruger, she's been on quite a roll, looking to you know, figure out a way to wrestle Empire. You know, but you know, same thing can be said about Romu Sakamoto. I mean, she's she's a, a well-traveled you know competitor. She was in the the finals of the ESW Diamonds Championship tournament at the beginning of the season. No, oh, right, you are, and both these ladies are they're international talents here. You know, Romy started in Japan, and the Poderosa started in Mexico, actually actually training alongside uh, Erica Costa. It's going to be interesting. It's a, it's a strong style versus Lucha Libre. Oh, for sure. And, it, and you know, just the uh, the sheer dynamic of you know a larger opponent against a much smaller one, you know, should be uh, should be quite a should develop into quite a contest. Very much a clashing of styles. And oh, Poderosa right. going for it all right away. Went for broke and ended up broke. Romy just a little too fast there. See, and that's that clashing of styles, that Lucha Libre throw caution to the wind style. Whereas Romy Sakamoto is that strong style, the more grounded style. Oh, absolutely. And Romy hit her with that stiff super kick. And that's the thing about Romy. All of her strikes mean something. Absolutely. Just wearing Poderosa down. And that's what she's going to have to do. She's going to have to dodge the big offense. You know, she's not going to overpower Poderosa, but she's going to have to... You know, miss those big swings, those big kicks, those big flying attacks. Oh, absolutely. She's going to have to just keep on her like this. And now we into the cover after that kick. One yeah. count. Yeah, that's not going to keep Poderosa down. You got to do a lot more than that. And this is what Romy has to do. She has to keep avoiding Poderosa's offense, countering at any chance. Oh, strength from Romy. Look at that. And she's going to have to just keep the speed going. Oh, man. That big, strong uh, elbow, strong style. Now Romy going up top. Big splash by the <laughs> Japanese firecracker. He's throwing it all in there. Now she's sizing Podorosa up. We'll be seeing, oh, the rising sun. Oh, that was impressive. Very impressive. Into the cover. And that's three. Oh, big, big victory for Romy Sakamoto. I would say. I don't want to go as far to say as that was an upset, but man. Huge victory for Romy Sakamoto. Let's take another look at that. And then that rising sun with that rotation she got on Odorosa. Impressive. And that and that's the thing. Romy knew what she would have to do, and that's what she did. She stayed on top of Odorosa, didn't let her get any offense. Big congrats to Romy Sakamoto. It's great seeing you back. Alright guys, it's time for our main event here tonight on Rise. We've had quite a night of action, and this last contest is no exception. We have an ESW YouTube title match here tonight, as Salvatore Moretti goes one-on-one -on -one with main event Jackson Ash. Oh, a great episode of Rise deserves a great main event, and this has a great, this has great main event written all over it. The Hitman, the Mafioso, Salvatore Moretti. Gets a one-on-one -on -one championship opportunity for the ESW YouTube Championship. Only problem is he has to take down the current champion, main event Jackson Ass, in his first main event, might I add. Right you are, Stephen. And uh, Jackson Ass has been on quite a roll here in ESW with an impressive debut at the ESW Claim to Fame Battle Royal, earning a contract, coming out, defeating Lars of Blood Clot. Lars, Lars Johansson to win that ESW YouTube title and uh, ever since then uh, he, he's kind of shut Blood Clot up a little don't you think? Yeah it seems like you know Blood Clot had a problem with uh, him taking the championship off their front man their lead singer Lars Johansson so you know each member tried their hand at taking the YouTube title away from main event Jackson Ave and none of them were successful as you can see because that that beautiful red strap championship is still around the waist of Jackson Ave. Perhaps you are and this should be quite a competitive contest Sal Moretti uh, getting his first title opportunity here this season you know and Sal's had quite a journey this season as well warring with Unit Club 
and that you know that took up a bulk of, of his time this season. All right, you are, Cruz. Yeah, he's you know he was in, he was entrenched in warfare. You know the Moretti crime family and the Unit Club for a lot of this season, and it's it's been hard to you know bounce back from that to try to figure out okay where do I go from here. It's been a very rocky road for Sal Moretti thus far this season. So let's see, you know, if he can maybe pull out a huge victory here in the main event and walk out with the YouTube championship. Oh, for sure. And you know Sophia Moretti would be ecstatic if Sal could bring some gold back home to the family. Oh, I think she's counting on it, Cruz. Here we go. Sal Moretti here. And his opponent from Brooklyn. And there you see the current champion. Main event, Jackson Ave in the main event of ESW Rise. Man. What, what a road we've had here this season, Steven. Ups, downs, different turns, detours, and you know we're all leading to Wrestle Empire. I know these guys are looking for their path as well. well we've come so far, Cruz, but it's not over yet. Not by a long shot. Is Jackson Ave handing over that belt for the last time? There's Sal Moretti getting a good look at that red strap ESW YouTube Championship. And the crowd are going crazy for this main event. Here we go. Jackson Ab coming out strong. Sal countering the... Oh, for Sal a, missed the big clothesline. Went for a discus lariat, got nothing. And Jackson Ab with a neck breaker. Jackson Ave isn't going to let no. anyone take that YouTube title away from him. In the recover, Sal getting the shoulder up. You know, I'm sure Renegade Ross Snodgrass has a close eye on this match right here. Oh, I'm sure. You know, now that he's done with the Chosen, you know, he can focus on getting the YouTube championship back, and that should spell trouble for either one of these men. Whichever one walks out with the title, you know Renegade Ross Snodgrass is going to be chipping at their heels. Oh, absolutely. And here we go, back and forth offense. Main event, oh, with a big overhead Uranagi. And Sal fighting back here. You got to give it to the Morettis. They got lots of fight in them. Oh, they're very tough from the tough streets of New Jersey. Jackson Ave, ooh, big knee to the face. Falling into the cover here. Kind of a laissez-faire kind of a cover there. You, you didn't really get all of it. Oh, Sal just knocking him back into the corner. What's he have in mind here? Could be setting up for some weight. Looks like a superplex. And he has it. Oh, from oh, the top rope. Big superplex by Sal Moretti. Oh, man. Jackson Ave feeling that. Now he's talking some trash to Jackson Ave. I think Moretti needs to stay on him here. Now Jackson Ave starting to stir. Oh, big knee. Taking Jackson Ave right back down. Rolling S out. Smart strategy by Jackson Ave. Rolling out to the outside, getting his wits about him. Oh. Now, now dragging Sal Moretti to the outside. He's brawling right here in front of us, Steven. Good thing I've already finished my sugar-free monster. That, that's always a plus. Jackson Ave trying to compose himself out here. Oh, big right hand. Right hand again. Oh, oh man. man. A haluva kick. Wait a minute. What do they want? It's blood clot. Is Blood Clot here? Jackson Ave, obviously thrown off here, looking for Blood Clot. Where are they at, Steven? Oh! Wait a minute. Sal Moretti with a clothesline to the back of the neck. And Blood, uh, I think they just did that to trick Jackson Ave. Just playing mind games with Jackson Ave. We saw mind games earlier. Oh, man. Sal hoisted him up. Stalling suplex and just squatting with him, showcasing the strength that the hitman possesses. Oh man. Jackson Ave definitely reeling from that distraction. 
Oh! oh. Reverse DDT. Now he lifts him back up. Oh, he just put the hit out. He put the hit out on Jackson Ave. And that could be it. Oh, and Jackson Ave kicks out for just, like a second. Just barely getting the shoulder up. Oh. And all that knee to the dome once again. Jackson Ave just hasn't recovered from that distraction. He hasn't got his head back in the game. Could it cost him here? Oh. Snap German suplex. He's trying. But Sal's just been on top of it. Sal is staying on him. Oh, oh. snowplow. Could that be it? We have a new YouTube champion, Cruz. You can thank Blood Clot for that. Courtesy of Blood Clot, your winner and new ESW YouTube champion, Salvatore Moretti, his first bit of gold here in ESW. Well, congratulations to Sal, but you know main event Jackson Avenue is not happy about it. Oh, he cannot be happy at one bit. He's got to want to get his hands on Blood Clot. But congratulations to Sal Moretti, the Hitman, your new ESW YouTube champion. Right, you are, Steven. And it's been a great show here tonight on the road to Wrestle Empire. So for Cruz de la Cruz. And I'm Steven Fine saying like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thank you, guys, and good night. Ah, la tua pussy niente flussi niente pussy Il tuo rapper del cazzo niente flussi non manca tu sì Tossici del cazzo rapper del cazzo illusi Mi state tutti sul cazzo meritate solo abusi Poi è inutile che vieni e ti scusi Perché Dio perdona ma la strada no Siamo stati 24 mesi chiusi Tutte e 24 le ho passate in boa Le ho passate con la guardia che mi portava là Che mi portava il Fumo con farsuna Me lo succhio una